All right. Good morning, Dr. Edgren. I'm Chad Shermer, Alan Cannon, and Drew Gillespie. And thank you for allowing us to be here. We are students in the chemical engineering department, seniors at Brigham Young University. And over the past couple years, we've worked a lot with mathematical modeling, energy, mass balances, and we decided to apply that to a design to maximize the efficiency of a solar still. Now, uh, the objective of this project um, was to maximize the efficiency of the solar still by controlling the brine depth within the solar still. And quick background on a solar still on the diagram on the left, you can see that it is an apparatus that has a, a clear plastic top where that allows solar radiation through, which evaporates water on, on some sort of brine, some sort of dirty water. The water evaporates, um, condenses on the top part of the hard plastic, and then collects into a, a, a collection type bin sort of thing, and purifies the water as that happens. And it's used uh, pretty extensively in developing countries to purify water. So the diagram on the <coughs> right um, kind of shows some of the driving force for why we chose this project, because you can see that the productivity of a solar still, yeah, um, there's a clear correlation between the productivity and the brine depth within the solar still. So we wanted to see what we could do to control that brine depth and how we could maximize um, the efficiency and the amount of water provided to these families. Okay, so if you see here, this is our, our Simulink model. Um, first of all, we had to come up with a way to model the radiation coming off the sun, and that's what you see here um, with watts per meter squared on the y-axis. So over the course of the day, the peak uh, radiation coming from the sun is 1,000 watts per meter squared. Um, and then uh, the average is 500, which we found through literature values to be a pretty normal value, 500 watts per meter squared over the course of the day. Um, and here you have uh, some of our equations that we used. This is our efficiency equation on the bottom uh, and the Simulink model. And what we tried to do was uh, our theoretical apparatus had a solar panel attached to it that would power the controller as well as measure how much radiation was coming from the sun. And knowing the efficiency of the solar panel as well as the efficiency of the solar still, we were able to <coughs> um, know how much radiation was coming in and uh, know based off of the, um, the heat of vaporization of the water, know how much was going to be evaporating per amount of time. And from those numbers, we could control how much water need, needed to be input to the solar still to maintain that optimal level. Um, and so that's kind of the, the basis behind everything. Um, and honestly, in a real world, appli real world application, if you had a solar panel, a controller, and a solar still, it's a minimal upfront cost for continuous uh, clean water you know, it, it provides, what we found, it provides about 8 liters of clean water per day. So that's enough for uh, at least two people uh, to drink about a gallon of water a day. So uh, we found that it's, it's pretty, pretty good in, in all that respect. Now, <coughs> this project was a little different than lots of projects that we've done in the past, primarily because our set point was so close to the limits of where we wanted the depth to be. Because in reality, if the, the water depth is less than one centimeter, it becomes more efficient. But at that point, you start to run into problems with the, the water running out, or you know the water from the valve can't quite get all the way to the other side, and, and you end up becoming less efficient, basically because all of your water evaporates. So we wanted to keep it right at one centimeter, but we didn't really want it to go below one centimeter. So that was really kind of a challenge. And the way we kind of figured out how to get that to work is really we just had to increase the gain a lot. So we found that if we made it really pretty aggressive, that in the size of our solar still, um, it was able to maintain um, a set point within 5%. So if you look on this graph right here on the right, you have 5% right about there, and then the set point right about there. And it oscillates kind of between that bottom 5%, those two values right there. And that oscillation is actually pretty good because if you notice, it gets right about to one centimeter and then it just kind of jumps up a little. And that's really kind of what we wanted. As long as it stays within that five centimeter, or that 5% range, we were pretty pleased with 
any minimal oscillations that could occur. And I think that was a trade-off that came because of, of the high gain that we, we put. Now one thing to note is when we did this, we actually had a really small uh, time delay. And we figured for the size of our, our solar still, which was you know just one meter squared area, that's probably pretty acceptable where it's not going to take a, a really long time for the depth to change a lot. But if you were to scale this up to you know an industrial size where you have multiple meters squared, um, you're going to find a little bit greater of a time delay. So you might see a little bit um, different results in the control. But it's something that can be tuned to each to each one specifically. Now our model here actually took into account the changing solar radiation throughout the day. Um, but a future project or a future um, thing to do with this model might be to include um, some different disturbances. So for example, cloud cover or you know something else weird that may occur, a storm or something. Changes so in seasons. Well. Exactly, exactly. So on top of the the curve just for the normal day of solar radiation, um, it may be good to include some kind of random disturbance uh, beyond that. But we're confident that this model could already handle things like that because it's already handling the changing in the solar radiation throughout the day. And so, I mean, in conclusion, uh, what we've already stated, I guess, is that we were able to successfully maintain the water depth within the 5% of the set point using our model, and which um, correlates to about 8 liters per day. Uh, which we figured was a good number to shoot for and we were pleased with our results.